Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the Hesse. We have been working on the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book here, the Hesse Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. As I said, we are working on the vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of the book. In addition to the vocabulary words that we are working on, if you need help with the math portion of the exam, you will see, you will find on my channel, solution to every single math problem that is there in this book in, in 50 videos, 1 through 50. Just type in HESI, HESI math, day 1, all the way up to day 50, and that will present to you all the solutions. After having watched those videos, 50 videos, if you feel that you need more help in math, you will see that there are also 80 more videos on the math of T's. And math on the T's, as you probably know, is very comparable, very similar to one what to what one encounter to what one encounters on HESI. So that's uh, that is additional help if you need it. 80 videos on T's and the HESI. Let's get going. Today is our lesson number 12. The very first, big, very first big word we're going to cover today is something that you will find on page number 50, I believe. On page number 50, the very first word we're going to cover is elevate. It's a very simple, straightforward word. L O V. As you know by now, regardless of how simple the pronunciation is, we always make a point of writing down the pronunciation. What does it mean to elevate? It's very simple. It means to lift. It means to lift or to raise. Lift or to raise to a higher position. To lift or to raise to a higher position. But that is not the meaning that they are interested in. This being the medical book, uh, as you know, uh, that's not the meaning we're looking for, to lift to a higher position, as in an elevator takes you to a higher position. That's not the meaning we're looking for here. The second meaning of the word elevate is to increase, to increase the amplitude, intensity, or volume of something volume of something to increase the amplitude or the intensity if it becomes more intense so one can speak in in, in the se in the case of in the sense of a medical term one one can speak of the blood pressure having been elevated yeah, we would say your blood pressure seems to have elevated your blood pressure seems to have increased your blood pressure seems to have gone to a higher level you have an elevated, you have an elevated blood pressure. You have a blood pressure that is higher than normal. The noun is, the noun is elevation. The noun is elevation. L O V E S H A N. Elevation. It is, it is for that reason, it is for that reason that the word is here, elevate. Not for the first meaning, the first meaning we all know, to lift or to raise to a higher level. Of course, we all know that, which is why we take the elevator to go to a higher level. But it can also be used more broadly as in to increase or to increase the intensity, volume or amplitude or something. As in, as I said, an elevated blood pressure. An elevated sugar level or whatever it might be. Do you understand? Let's move on to the next word. The next word we have is the next word we have is endogenous. In dodge dodge. O, oh, that's the third syllable, endogenous, endogenous, it's an adjective. What does endogenous mean? 
Endogenous means, endo means inside. The prefix here, endo, means inside. Endogenous literally means something that is produced inside a system, something that is produced within a system, something that is produced within a system, something that is produced within a system, as opposed to something that is a result of something that is the, the, uh, as a result of some something something that happened outside the system. Let me give you an example. The example that I'm going to give you obviously has nothing to do with uh, medical terminologies and medical field because I'm not a medical person. So I'm going to give you the example as I understand it. But at least it will make you understand that it does not just use in the sense of a, uh, in the sense that they're using here as in something being determined endogenously as in within the within the system that you find in the in the body as in your your nervous system or your resp resp respiratory system or your uh, whatever cardiac system whatever it might be is if something that is that is a result of something that happened outside the system then it's is uh, the word that we use the antenna that we use exogenous but we'll get to that in a second but otherwise we'll say it is determined within the system we said the effect or uh, seems to be endogenous in other words, something is going on within the system, system being whichever whichever system they be talking about, as I said, the nervous system or respiratory system or whatever system might be. But the term can be used more broadly. For example, for example, the term has a very broad application. Endogenous simply means something that is within a system. For example, if I tell you that my total monthly expenditure, my total monthly expenditure happened to be 80% of my income 80% of my income so whatever I make I spend 80% I spend 80% of that that's my expenditure obviously that means I must be saving 20% plus plus something that happens outside the system something that has happened outside the system uh, for example plus uh, plus it is usually referred to as a shock shock being something that happened outside the system for example if I tell you that uh, that the last month usually my uh, expenditures are eighty percent of income, but last month my total expenditure were thirty thousand dollars, and obviously my total monthly income is not thirty thousand dollars. So then what happened? Well, I spent eighty percent of my income as I usually do, and the reason why all of a sudden it's more, way more than usual, is something that happened exogenously, exogenously. And that is the fact that I happen to win a lottery ticket. So that is an exogenous event, an event that hap is determined outside the system. It's, it's not, it's, so here my expenditure went up not as a result of something that happens within this given system, but something that is, that is outside. It's a one-off thing. It is, it is a, it is a one-off thing. You understand what one-off means? If something is a one-off, that means it doesn't happen very often, it's an exception, it's an aberration, it's not, some, it's not a usual thing. I'm using too many words here, I'm not sure if we have covered any of these words. If you give me a second here, and if we have not, then I may have to, just give me one second. No, we have not learned one-off, but we have learned aberration, I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact, just give me one second. I'll give you a video where you can learn the word aberration, and uh, an aberration is a, is a, is an abnormality. It's a, it's, a, it's an exception. It's a deviation from norm. Yeah. An aberration is a deviation from norm. Well, there you go. Day number five. Day fifteen. Now this day 15 that I'm talking about, obviously we are at day number 12, we are not at 15. This day 15 that I'm talking about is this series right here, which is a separate series. Right now I'm at 75, the goal is to go up to, up to 100. If you just type in vocabulary, hasty vocabulary words or GRE vocabulary words or GMAT vocabulary words, whichever test you're preparing for, just type in, for example, GRE vocabulary words day number 15, the video will pop up. Watch that video where we learned about aberration. Aberration, as I said, is a one-off thing. Is a one-off thing. One-off means it's a one-time deal, it's a one-time deal, it's not going to happen again, it's an exception, it's a deviation from the norm, it is an out-of-the-ordinary situation, 
It is a shock to the system. It is supposed to determine outside the system. It was an exogenous event. It was an exogenous event, an event that happened outside the system. Do you understand? Let's learn the next word then, which is the antonym of this word. Endogenous was the word. So let's learn the antonym, which is right here. So that was the reason why my expenditure this particular month went up so high. My total expenditure this month were, were $30,000. But my income was only $10,000. If my income is only $10,000, and if I told you that my, I spent about 80% of my income, I should have spent $8,000. Oh, well, how did I spend $30,000? Where did this other $22,000 come from? But that was the exogenous event. That was an event that happened outside the system because I happened to win a lottery. It's a one-off thing. I'm not going to win a lottery every week. I'm not going to win a lottery every month. It's an it's a one-off thing. It was an aberration. It was a deviation. It was an exception. It was something that happens once in a blue moon. Let's learn the word exogenous. 57. Exogenous is the antonym, is the antonym of endogenous. These are these are antonyms. These are opposite of each other, exogenous and endogenous. Exogenous. It's an adjective, exogenous. It's an adjective, exogenous, which means determined outside the system. Determined. outside the system having a cause having a cause external to the given system having a cause external to the given system let me raise this bottom part because it gets to be too much here And the adverb would be exogenously, exogenously, right here. Similarly, the adverb of endogenous would be endogenously. If something is determined outside the system, you said that it was, determ it, 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 it was determined exogenously. It was not determined endogenously. It was not something that took place as a result of something that happened internally within the system. It wasn't an endogenous effect. It was determined exogenously. Let's move on then. Next word that we have, it's going to be 58. It's going to be 58 and the word is... Why don't we put it on the top of the page, top of the book, top of the page. Egg, that's the first syllable, egg. Zas, that's the second syllable, zas, egg zas. Or, exacerbate. What does it mean to exacerbate? It's a word, to exacerbate. Exacerbate means, which is precisely why I write down the, which is precisely why I write down the pronunciation here. I, we always write the pronunciation. As you can tell, even though I have the pronunciation ahead of, in front of me, even though I have seen this word before, and even though I know the pronunciation, still, as you can probably tell, I have a little bit of hesitation in my voice because it's a tricky one. Exacerbate. You have to slow down. If you do not slow down, you're not going to pronounce it properly. Exas, ex exacerbate, exacerbate. What does it mean to exacerbate? It simply means to make something worse. To make something worse. Exacerbate. To increase, to increase the severity of something. Severity, severity, as you know, is the noun of severe. To make something more severe than what it is. Severity is the noun of severe. It means to it means to to uh, 
aggravate the situation. If you're aggravating the situation, if you're aggravating the situation, you're not improving things. You're actually making it worse. Do you understand? So what happened? Uh, did you take this medicine that I gave you? Did you take this new tablet that I uh, prescribed to you? Yes, I took the medicine. What happened then? Well, it actually exacerb exacerbated the situation. It made me feel even worse than before. My headache even went up uh, higher. It did not help. It was actually making things worse. It exacerbated the situation. To, it means to go from, it means to go from, from bad to worse. It means to go from bad to worse. The noun would be exacerbation. Exacerbation. That's all I have for today. I will see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.